So I wanted to do a video about all seven churches that are in the book of Revelation, where they sit on the menorah and a very special message at the very end. The message at the end is not for everybody. It's just a quick thing. Anyhow, really early in the morning and I just got the tap, tap, tap on the spirit to do it. You take all the churches and put them on the branch of the, you know, the seven branches of the menorah, which is very important, by the way, that they have seven branches because there are seven churches. And then if you follow each church and their branch, it leads you to the other church on the other side. So if you take Smyrna and Philadelphia, my two favorite, um, you'll find that they follow into each other past the uh, trunk. Smyrna is... It means suffering or martyrdom. It's said that the people underneath in, in that church, you know, kind of un, in that branch underneath the heading of the suffering or the martyrdom, they're the church of the martyrs. Like they suffer and God's saying, hey, don't be afraid. You're about to go through some things. I think he even says for 10 days or so. And then for the other side of this menorah, there is the church of Philadelphia. That means brotherly love. And it means, um, according to Jesus, he says that you will be kept from the, uh, the hour that will try all of human of humanity that will try all of man. And, um, so he's saying you'll be kept from the hour, keep your crown. But he also says it to Smyrna to keep your crown. He doesn't say that to any other churches, but they happen to match. They match in crowns because no other churches promised a crown. And then they also happen to match in, um, this weird statement about Jewish people or Jews. This is a Jewish king who has risen. He's Jewish, a Jew, speaking to John, a Jew, who was once Jewish, who is now a Christian, who's going to report to people who are in churches who were Jewish, you know, Jews, who are among people who are trying to find them and trick them. And some of them are underground and some of them are hiding. And so he's speaking in that, that type of context. He's not really talking like, you know, in our day and age where there's like so much different things happening in the world with different groups of people sitting in different places and all aware of each other. That's not how it worked then. So this is not an anti-Semitic message that Jesus Christ is giving, just in case you're wondering. And this is, of course, been used as a type of judgment upon uh, the tribes, uh, the original tribes, because then what the replacement the theologians will say is, oh, we have replaced Israel, which just isn't true, because then uh, Apostle Paul's Romans 9, 10, and 11 wouldn't be applicable, which doesn't make sense. Anyhow, so uh, that being said, I've always loved this. I've always loved that the two crowns matching and the fact that they sit on the menorah beautifully, they happen to match with this weird statement about, I know who the evil people are among you. Uh, the Holy Spirit is aware of who they are. I think it's what Jesus is saying. And um, one is promised suffering, one is promised something like, it's almost like fellowship. And that's why I, I kind of was fascinated by it. Cause I thought, Oh, well, maybe it's saying maybe there's a connection between Christians and Jewish people. And that's kind of what the brotherly church is about. I wasn't really sure, but, um, I, I think I, I have a firmer understanding now. Um, anyway, some people say that not only was a phys these were physical places, but these can be spiritual states of being. Some Christians believe this, that, um, you can be, in these different churches spiritually and maybe you can kind of fluctuate between these different churches depending on the state that you're in or the way in which you're moving and you always need to be reminded no matter what church you're reading there are parts of each church we all need to remember you know not to lose our first love we need to remember to um even though we feel as though we're rich, we might actually be poor. And boy, if you read the context of that, of these little villages, oh yes, I want to advertise this book um, by Professor Dan Harvey. It, it is called Experiencing the Apocalypse. Um, and he, he does a really good job kind of walking you through each of these living, breathing places and situations where you can actually see what the references were to and about. And you know, the real life places like gardens that were dedicated to goddesses and gods. And, and they had a little tree where they called it the tree of life. And Jesus would reference and say, well, I'm the tree of life. And he's referencing the very places in which these people were sitting. Like he's like talking about their landscape. So if you got a message from God or Holy Spirit, and it's like, you know, I'm like the, I live, I live by the beach, you know, and I have like a, a park near me and it's called like, I don't know, sunshine or something. Um, and Jesus make a references to the very like landmarks in my area. That would be kind of incredible. And saying, you know, 
he's like a day at the beach. I can't even do this. I can't even like express to you like how God did it, how God did it. But he he did some. If you read the book, it's very good. Anyway, um, so this last part of the message um is about uh somebody had left Israel. Well, I'm not gonna say who. Um, two days before the thing happened. And I believe that means they're a uh, part of the escaping. Um, and when that happened a week after, after I kind of, kind of realized the severity of what happened and how weird it was and all the other news was coming out, um, it was almost a whole week later that um, I realized they had left two days before and then the Holy Spirit said Philadelphia. And I was like, it's not like I'm saying I didn't believe the Holy Spirit, but I also didn't want to like, I'm too Catholic for all that. I'm just not going to say anything. And then um, all of a sudden, you know, synchronicities start happening and I had to like lean away from it a bit, not to see the synchronicities, Philadelphia, Philadelphia, I mean, just get that thing all, all of a sudden, just out of the blue, just everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. And that person was in Philadelphia among chaos. And I thought, oh my gosh. So, um, yeah, I think that's spiritual confirmation. This is just, you know, and what you do with spiritual confirmation is you just put it out there. And if that person asks the Holy Spirit and to confirm it, that's great. But this is simply for comfort. This is simply saying to whomever that not to be afraid that in the future, when things come around, when you are wherever you're supposed to be, you won't be afraid because you'll know that you, you, will, you will escape and that you'll be kept uh, in, a, in a place. And now, what if that person, people will pass away all the time, and that would make me very sad to think that they're in that parallel place, suffering something, not given any, like, morsel of truth as to maybe what spiritual state that they're supposed to be in and that there's a special crown and that don't worry the people around you might try to trick you but it's okay god sees them and god will reveal them to you and that would be kind of sad so i decided to to obey this simply because it makes me uncomfortable it, it makes me feel like it's a prosperity gospel ish but anyway that's the message the message is i believe that a particular people or person is in the church of philadelphia in the future you know it's just like i see a crown that's it my faith is in a God who gives revelation to all humans, meeting them wherever they are, because he made you from the inside out. He made your personality. He made your potential. He made your, you know, your intelligence. He made um, basically the hardware and the ability for the hardware in your brain to be able to process a certain amount of information at a certain speed. And He's going to give you what you need, just like we do for babies or children, at the rate in which you can receive it. And he's going to put you through whatever you need to go through to receive what he has to tell you. So my faith is not in man and their ability to avoid the truth, but my my faith is in a God who will put you in all kinds of conditions and places to make it so that it is not avoidable is unavoidable you have to face it because it will be there and god says you are going to be without excuse you will know who he is it's, a, it's interesting because this is this is my opinion about who john the, the revelator was um you know he as he's trying to get this information you can tell he's struggling a little bit he's even like trying to figure out how to describe what he's seeing um, and he kind of goes back and forth with the people who are telling him, well, well, this is what's happening. And he's like, oh, what do I write? And you can just read it and you can see he's struggling. He's trying to take what he's seeing and experiencing and putting, putting it down on a piece of paper like somebody in the middle of a tornado or something or a hurricane. It's just a mess. He just doesn't know how to even begin to compose himself. Um, the reason why I believe the the john in the gospel and the gospels are the john the revelator is because jesus makes a very interesting statement where he says to all of them there are some among you here who will not taste death and see the return of the son of man and a lot of people go oh he's talking about you know maybe a few of them or he never says many he never says one but 
John actually does end up, this John the Revelator, who I think is the John who was in the presence of Jesus, he does end up seeing the return of the Son of Man. He does end up seeing Jesus return, and he never tastes death. He is alive when he gets that revelation. That's interesting. And then um, there's this thing where Jesus reveals, I think it's to Peter, he says that basically he'll die a very sad death. And then uh, Peter says this funny thing about, well, what about him? Jesus answers him with, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Right? So this to me confirms that John, the revelator, the revealer of, of revelation is apostle John or, or the disciple. And um, I just wanted to confirm that I got the ding. You know, if you have the Holy Spirit, you know what the ding is. And it's basically as you're, as I was just sitting here and just doing the video, all of a sudden, just like a flood of, remember when John did this? Remember when Peter did that? And then as I was putting it together, like finding the scripture so that I could read it out loud and say it correctly and have it on the screen, all of a sudden the ding happened and it said, ah, martyrdom and those that are kept. So it's like the Holy Spirit knows the, the gospel just back words and forwards and it's like here's another example of a person like Peter who's been promised martyrdom and then you have John who was promised to be kept he was given a vision he was kept alive he did survive beyond the vision uh, but you, by the way he's telling the story you wouldn't think he would have survived it because he you know you could tell it's quite quite wild but anyhow um this is Linda of Christ is King forever I hope this video encourages you and meets you where you are and um you know it doesn't feel like i never want my videos to feel like pressure or indoctrination or feel like like you have to be something that you're not because truth be told unless you get the holy spirit unless it's given to you by god and the right place the right condition just like a plant um everything has to be just so he knows you like you know somebody who raises plants knows a plant he knows what condition you need to be in. So maybe some people won't reach their fullest potential unless they're in a, an environment in which um, brings them to martyrdom. Maybe there are some people that need to be like John, who's isolated and who needs to get that revelation uh, in a way that nobody else could really handle. Because I mean, John's very special um, in the sense that I don't think I could handle what he was given. Could you? Uh, the other thing I want to talk about um, later in another video is Isaiah and his experience with God, uh, you know, on the throne. And basically, what is up with that relationship between God and Isaiah, why he was chosen, and why most of us wouldn't have responded the way he did to whatever God was putting in front of him and saying, hey, look, this is, there's a whole room here, and there's a big robe, and there's angels, and, and it's all revealing something very important, and that's going to be my next video. This is Linda of Christ's King Forever. May God be with you.